Deep in the basement of Sofa Shalom, there's a dusty library that's really the home of a magical bookcase to another world. When Micah and Miri and their friends are home, where there's wolves and hares living fairy tales, Mr. Safer, the golem, and glass shoe sales. So come join us for the magic and mystery, maybe even a bit of Jewish history. To give us a taste of all the adventures beyond the bookcase, beyond the bookcase, beyond the bookcase. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dobby. <laughs> you were telling me Mr. Safer used to be into punk rock music as a teenage war? <laughs> there is no way. Mary, Jacob, I know my brother is very, shall we say, fussy these days, but he used to blare music so loudly, I could barely think. Why do you think I moved to Helm? Now this is the type of noise I love. Put a pin in it? Run it up the flagpole? What does it mean? Wow, these office workers are starting to lose it. You know, there are actually a lot of Jewish punk rockers. Blue, there are a lot of Jewish rockers and artists and writers and makers everywhere. Everywhere. It is part of what is making this gray town so very sad to me. All the creativity, the explosions of color, the silly ways we make Helm vibrant. The people of Helm need to get back to our silly ways. I don't know how we'll do it. Don't you worry, Daffy. Remember... We already started returning color. To and the... glitter. So, so much glitter. To the shul. Think about Auntie PJ's note. Embrace the silly. We know now that we have to start returning all the silliness to Helm in order to restore all the colors and vibrancy of Helm. Yes, yes. The only way to make Helm Helm is to make Helm Helm. Yes, I think you're absolutely right. But where do we start? All I see are office buildings, like the corporate company and the upstart There's startup. There's no I and team. Back to the drawing board. Bandwidth. <laughs> oh, God. Poor Mr. Harimi. Well, who remembers some stories from Helm? Mm, uh, oh, I remember the story of the donation box. You've heard about this wise and wonderful idea? Yes, I know it too. After your donation box was stolen one time from the synagogue, the people of Helm decided to put it out of reach so it couldn't be stolen again. Then you hung it from the ceiling, but realized no one could reach it. Oh yeah, and then you built a staircase to it so everyone could reach it. It makes for a crowded synagogue, but a silly one. Blue and Miri, let's go back to the synagogue and see if the inside has returned to silliness like the outside. If not, you can count on us to put it right, Doffy. Okay, but don't forget to put it in reach after you put it out of reach. Now don't forget, if the box is where it should normally be, abnormal it. I'd start with hoisting it into the air. We're on it, Evie. I hope there's something metal we can use. Well, Micah, Evie, where do you want to start? Doffy, you mentioned the borscht barrels containing the moon used to be right over here, right? Where this, um, headquarters bureau of office working is? Wow. You know, these things are getting out of control. Exactly. It was lovely having so much borscht handy. And to be able to look at the moon in them, too. Well, that was just the icing on the beet cake. Micah, how can you eat matzo at a time like this? And mm. where did it even mm. come from? Mm. Mm. Matzo helps me think. And um, also... I have no idea how my pockets became full of matzah. It's like magic or something. Uh-oh. Magic? Okay, Micah, I know it's not invisibility or magnetism, but I wonder if your mashal magic power is always having pockets full of matzah. Honestly, I would take that over any power. And it does seem kind of true. As much as I snack on it, my pockets just keep filling up. Hey, this gives me an idea. What if I use this snack to remind the people of Helm about their favorite food? Borscht by the barrel? Yeah, I think helping them remember is the first step in bringing back the silly. Good idea. It's worth a try. Hey, Ms. Meyer, please join us here for a moment, won't you? I suppose I can. What's standing next to one more office? It seems it's all we have anymore. 
Hi, Ms. Meyer. Would you like some matzo? Matzo? Why, yes. I suppose I would. It's so plain, though. What I wouldn't give for something really flavorful in all this gray nonsense. Remember flavor, Daffy? <sighs> something like maybe borscht? Borscht! Yes! Oh, and remember the color, Daffy? So vibrantly purple? Well, except when the moon shone on top. If you focused your eyes just right, you could only see the beautiful white of a full moon. I remember the moon and borscht, too. Oi, Mrs. Lamb, do you remember the barrels of borscht for the moon? Why, hello. A and yes, weren't they just right here before? Oh, what I would not give for some lovely borscht. Psst. We need to do something silly, I think. Is now a good time for a chant, Micah? You know, I think it might be borscht. Borscht, 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 borscht. Look, it's changing. Our lovely, vibrant barrels are back. But oh no, where's the moon? Don't worry, Ms. Meyer. It's not nighttime yet. Oh. oh. <laughs> I suppose you're right. Well, thank you for the matzo. No problem. Literally any time. Here, matzo for everyone. Ooh. 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 Yummy. Do you happen to have any bottomless horseradish in those pockets, Micah? For the matzo? No, for the borscht. My brother turned me on to it, actually. A broken clock is right twice a day, they say. Uh, sadly, there is only matzo. But look at this whole corner. The barrels are back. The sidewalks are covered in neon chalk drawings of the moon. And there are even carp jumping out of the fountain next to the barrels. It's catching on. This is extremely exciting. I can't wait till my glorious Moo Moo returns. Every moment in this top hat and gray suit crushes my very worm soul. <laughs> Have you tried putting all your clothes on backwards and upside down? Backwards and upside down? Well, that sounds silly. Exactly. I know it's the perfect solution. I can see it so clearly. Do you need help balancing your hat upside down? Here, I'll turn your jacket inside out. There, you look ridiculous. <laughs> now you quit laughing at me. This is a very stressful time. Go take a look at yourself in that barrel, Dobby. Oh, I look, I look so silly. <laughs> so wonderfully silly. <laughs> My clothes, they're back. My lime green fedora, my pink and orange moo moo. Don't I look radiant? Hey, look, everyone. Daffy's out of his gray clothes. Quick, everyone, turn your clothes inside out and upside down. <laughs> because in hell, getting dressed is fun. This is a good way to remember that. <laughs> Everyone's bright and silly clothes are returning. Wow, this is quite a fashion statement. My pink cowboy hat. Oh, my furry underwear. I found you. Blue, Miri, they're over here. Hello, Jacob. Good to see my friends again. Wow. I can't believe the town is slowly turning back. I just saw a fringe vest in lilac. That was a first for me. We were about to turn the inside of the shoal back to its old helm self as well. You were right, Evie. Hoisting it into the sky was the first step to the color returning. And the villagers started bringing in ladders to get back to it. Once that happened, and all chaos broke loose, uh, the color and glitter started returning. Again, so, so much glitter. I haven't known you very long, Evie, but I'm starting to suspect I know your Mashal magic as well. 
finding the solutions to problems. They're normally reserved for our dear, wise sages of Helm, but I think they should count you as one of them now. Hmm. I was just getting a vision, actually. We need to go to the snow-covered field where all your homes are at once. I know just what to do. And it really is your superpower. Mine is pockets full of matzah. It's not fancy, but it is useful. Here, a snack while we walk. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. We found another page of PJ's journal. That mysterious goat ran right by the shoal, and this fluttered behind him. What does it say? It reads, it takes a village. We haven't been able to figure out what that means yet. Oh, I know exactly what it means. When someone uses the expression, it takes a village, it's usually a proverb about how it takes a whole community to help make things happen. And in this case, we actually need the whole village of Helm to come together. I mean, perhaps back at the village square, but not here, Evie. We're at the field of snow, and it is completely untouched. We can't have anyone trampling around here, remember? I remember this story of the snow in Helm, that the sages saw it glittering and thought it must be very valuable, and so no one must walk on it and crush it. And the girl who wakes you up for prayers in the morning would need to go to every house before the snow fell, so no one ruins it. But the snow has already fallen. Oh no, we'll never be able to get home. This whole expanse of Helm will be white and gray forever. I can't take this lack of color in my beautiful town any longer. I don't think you'll have to. What if just one person rode, say, a unicycle through the snow to the houses? That would be only a very thin track. Well, everyone has a unicycle here, of course. It's our favorite mode of transportation. This really is my kind of town. Golem, could you use your large, lovely voice to call for the residents of Helm to all come here? Hello, Helm! Hello, everyone! I know you're anxious about your town and of being able to get to all your homes. We'll ruin the value of the snow. It's worth so much! Well, my friend Jacob here is very good at unicycling, and I think if there was just a thin line through the snow, that would be okay, right? All right, amazing. Uh, can you use your powers to attract a unicycle? They're metal, right? Wow, you are getting really good at that. Thank you. And now, hang on. Balancing, balancing, and I'm off! Wow, that looks fun. I miss my unicycle. Me too. It's in my house. I wonder if I follow this very thin line. It won't ruin the snow too much, will it? I want to get mine. Hey, that's a great idea. I think you should all go get your unicycles. <laughs> They're all shuffling in a line to get to their houses. Do they know a crowd that big is trampling a lot of snow? <laughs> Just you wait. Look, there's Miss Meyer with her unicycle. Whee! And Mrs. Lamb. This doesn't leave too much of a mark at all. And everybody else. <laughs> it looks like so much fun. <laughs> yeah, it is. Snow is meant to be fun. Come on, everybody. <laughs> Snowball coming at you, Golem! <laughs> and snowballs coming at you! Ah. Effie, everyone's riding their unicycles on every part of the snow! What makes you think this will help? Just you watch! The houses! They are regaining their color! My teal and ruby window boxes! What sweet rapture! <laughs> Evie, you knew that if they saw a unicycle, they wouldn't be able to resist getting theirs. And if they were each on a unicycle, they'd all be having fun and being silly. <laughs> yep, just like the town of Helm should be. Okay, they did not stick to my tiny path, but this is way more fun. <laughs> it really is. Snow angels, anyone? Yeah, let's go for it! Someone will have to help me with mine. Worms aren't great at wings. <laughs> Come on, Doffy. We'll help you. Yeah. <laughs> All right.
And as the residents of Helm got into the silly spirit, and even Golem made the biggest snow angel anyone had ever seen... It's a snow dragon. We know Helm is returning bit by bit to its former glory. Join us again in two weeks to see if Helm can be fully restored and if our adventurers can continue on to find Auntie PJ and Mr. Safair and the way home and what that goat is up to. Woof, that's actually a lot to find. We can't wait to learn all about it in two weeks. Bye for now. Yamaboo.